Have you ever heard someone pose the question, how do we know the Bible's not just a bunch of made-up stories? Or even the statement, these people probably didn't even exist. But what if they did exist? If we could prove the existence of biblical figures, places, and events, then would that not also prove biblical history accurate and reliable? Together, we're going to look at 40 people, places, and events claimed by the Bible to have existed, 20 from the Old Testament and 20 from the New Testament. So let's start by looking in the Old Testament first. We will look in the Bible at a particular person, place, or event that is noted as existing, and then we will look at the hard evidence found, evidence such as artifacts. We all know the Pharaoh Ramses, right? In Genesis 47:11, it states, And Joseph placed his father and his brethren and gave them a possession in the land of Egypt, in the best of the land, in the land of Ramses, as Pharaoh had commanded. Did Pharaoh Ramses exist? Here we find this wall relief of the Pharaoh himself, Ramses II, also referred to as Ramses the Great, reigned during the Egyptian 19th dynasty around 1250 BC. Also found is a statue of Ramses II, so yes, Pharaoh Ramses was a real person from history, as stated in the first book of the Bible being in Genesis. And what about the Pharaoh Tirhaka? In 2 Kings 19, verse 9, the Bible states, And when he heard say of Tirhaka, king of Ethiopia, behold, he has come out to fight against thee, he sent messengers again unto Hezekiah. We know that Pharaoh Tirhaka was king of Egypt and a member of the Nubian 25th dynasty of Egypt. That was around the year 680 B.C. The granite shabti of Pharaoh Tirhaka was discovered, along with other artifacts, such as the Sphinx containing the face of Pharaoh Tirhaka. Have you ever heard of Pharaoh Hophra? Me neither, but in Jeremiah 44, verse 30, it states, Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will give Pharaoh Hophra, king of Egypt, into the hand of his enemies, and into the hand of them that seek his life. Did you know that the name Hophra itself is a Hebrew name? It is. He was also known as Apres in Greek and Wahibre in Egyptian. Found was a kneeling statue of Wahibre in the northwest delta of Egypt. Also discovered were relief fragments which bear the name of Apres from around 580 BC. Yet another pharaoh noted in the Bible that has been proven to exist. In the Bible, Pharaoh Necho is mentioned in 2 Chronicles 35, verse 20. After all this, when Josiah had prepared the temple, Necho, king of Egypt, came up to fight against Carchemish by Euphrates, and Josiah went out against him. Necho was king during the 26th dynasty of Egypt, around 600 B.C., and the son of Semeticus I. He played a significant role in the history of the Assyrian and Babylonian empires, as well as within the kingdom of Judah, found was a kneeling statue of Nako himself. Have you ever heard of the Merneptah Stele, also known as the Israel Stele? This is very important. In Genesis, it states that Israel dwelt in the land of Egypt. There's controversy over this. Some people say it didn't exist, but now we know it's true. The Merneptah Stele clearly shows proof that Israel existed within Egypt around the year 1200 B.C. What about King Sargon of Assyria? King Sargon was identified in Isaiah 20, verse 1, in the year that Tartan came unto Ashdod, when Sargon the king of Assyria sent him and fought against Ashdod and took it. Sargon the Great ruled around 2300 B.C. Here you see a bust of Sargon. Also discovered was a vase containing cuneiform inscription reading, Palace of Sargon, King of Assyria. Isaiah obviously spoke truth of historical events of his time. Here's another fact. King Sennacherib of Assyria in 2 Kings 19, verse 36. So Sennacherib, king of Assyria, departed and went and returned and dwelt in Nineveh. Found was a Sennacherib prison from around the year 701 B.C. It was found in the ruins of Nineveh and contained annals from Sennacherib. Also discovered was a collection of stone panels from the palace of Sennacherib, which are on display today.
And what about the infamous Jezebel and King Ahab? Did they exist? 1 Kings 21, 25. But there was none like unto Ahab, which did sell himself to work wickedness in the sight of the Lord, whom Jezebel his wife stirred up. In the Stila of Shalmaneser III, it notes the Hebrew king Ahab being at the battle of Karkar. Also found was the seal of Jezebel, as seen here. And what about King Nebuchadnezzar? Surely he existed. 2 Kings 24.1 In his days, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came up, and Joachim became his servant three years. Then he turned and rebelled against him. Nebuchadnezzar existed around 600 BC and is perhaps the best known ruler of Babylon in the Chaldean dynasty. He is famous for his conquests of Judah and Jerusalem, his monumental buildings, his role in the book of Daniel, and the construction of the Hanging Gardens. The cylinder of Nebuchadnezzar II was found from the Neo-Babylonian time period. Also found was a brick which clearly states Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, who cares for Esagila and Ezeda, the oldest son of Nabopolassar, king of Babylon. And what about this guy, Nebuchadnezzar, noted in Jeremiah 39.3? All the officers of the Babylonian army came in and sat in triumph at the middle gate, Nergal Sherezer of Samgar and Nebu Sarsakim, a chief officer, and Nerga Sherezer, the king's advisor, and all the other officers. Here we find a clay cuneiform inscription referring to Nebu Sarsakim as being an actual official at the court of Nebuchadnezzar II. And what about King Isahadon in Ezra 4.2, which states, And we do sacrifice unto him since the days of Isahadon, king of Assur, which brought us up hither. Isahadon was a king of Assyria who reigned around 670 B.C. This plaque was found which shows King Isahadon and the queen mother Nakisha together. Also discovered was the stone prism of Isahadon from the Neo-Assyrian time period. Let's look at another fact, King Misha of Israel. In 2 Kings 3, 4, And Misha, king of Moab, was a sheepmaster, and rendered unto the king of Israel an hundred thousand lambs and an hundred thousand rams with the wool. We now know that King Misha actually existed, as demonstrated by the stone stele, known as the Misha stele, or the Moabite stone. It was set up around 840 BCE by King Misha of Moab. And what about the biblical King Uzziah in Amos 1 verse 1? The words of Amos, who was among the herdmen of Tekoa, which he saw concerning Israel in the days of Uzziah, king of Judah. This tablet, now known as the Uzziah tablet, was discovered in 1931 and proves the existence of King Uzziah. And what about the famous Hebrew king Hezekiah? In Isaiah 38, 9, it states, The writings of Hezekiah, king of Judah, when he had been sick and was recovered of his sickness. Yes, he did exist. Found was the seal of Hezekiah. Continuing with proof of King Hezekiah's reign, we also look in 2 Kings 20, 20, which states, As for the other events of Hezekiah's reign, all his achievements and how he made the pool and the tunnel by which he brought water into the city. Did Hezekiah build aquatic tunnels? Of course he did. His tunnel was discovered in 1838 and can be walked from end to end today. This tunnel was a primary source of water for the Hebrews in ancient Jerusalem. Let's consider King Solomon's city of Tadmor. In 2 Chronicles 8 verses 3 and 4, and Solomon went to Hamasaba and prevailed against it, and he built Tatmor in the wilderness, and all the store cities which he built in Hamath. These are the ancient remains of Tadmor, also known as Palmyra. Tadmor was an important city located in central Syria. Here we will take a look at several pictures of what remains of ancient Tadmor today.
Have you ever heard of Dagon, the half-fish, half-man, god of the Philistines? In Judges 16, verse 23, it states, Then the lords of the Philistines gathered them together to offer a great sacrifice unto Dagon, their god, and to rejoice. For they said, Our god hath delivered Samson, our enemy, into our hand. Dagon was one of the most widely worshipped deities in the ancient Near East. In the Holy Land, Dagon appears as a principal god of the Philistines with temples at Gaza, Bethshan, and Ashdod. Here we'll look at several depictions from ancient times of Dagon. And what about the beloved King David in 1 Samuel 20.16? So Jonathan made a covenant with the house of David, saying, Let the Lord even require it at the hand of David's enemies. King David was the second king of the United Kingdom of Israel around the year 1000 B.C. and successor to King Saul. He is depicted as the most righteous of all the ancient kings of Israel, although not without fault. The Tel Dan Stele contains an inscription noting, Hazael, I, king of Aram, as victor over the house of David. Fact 18, Cyrus, the great king of Persia. In Ezra 1.1, Now in the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, that the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah might be fulfilled, the Lord stirred up the spirit of Cyrus, king of Persia. Cyrus the Great, also known as Cyrus II of Persia, and Cyrus the Elder, was the founder of the Persian Empire under the Achaemenid dynasty. Found was this cylinder of Cyrus, discovered in the ruins of Babylon in what is present-day Iraq. Also discovered was the tomb of Cyrus. It was discovered in 1951 in south-central Iran. The Valley of Megiddo. Second Chronicles 25, verse 22. Nevertheless, Josiah would not turn his face from him, but disguised himself that he might fight with him, and hearkened not unto the words of Nacho from the mouth of God, and came to fight in the valley of Megiddo. Picture here are the archaeological ruins of ancient Megiddo, also known as the future prophetic location of the War of Armageddon. So let's end this list of 20 facts with the city of Jerusalem. And instead of providing one biblical quote, upon study, one actually finds that Jerusalem is noted a whopping 626 times in the Old Testament. That's right. And as you know, Jerusalem is still standing today, as seen here. So folks, together we have just witnessed 20 facts proving the Old Testament historically accurate. So let's now move forward to the New Testament and look at 20 biblical facts, mostly discovered recently as well, proving the New Testament to be historically accurate and reliable. Facts such as Augustus Caesar. In Luke 2, 1, And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. Did Augustus exist? Here we see a statue of Augustus Caesar that was discovered. Also along with this, these coins containing a profile of Augustus himself. Let's consider Tiberius Caesar. In Luke 3, verse 1, it states, Now in the fifteenth year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar, Tiberius Claudius Caesar Augustus, popularly known simply as Tiberius, was the Roman emperor at the time of the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. Tiberius reigned for 23 years from 14 AD to 37 AD. This bust of Tiberius was discovered and is on display in Palermo, Sicily today. Also on display, get this, is the actual sword of Tiberius, which was discovered. And what about Pontius Pilate? We've all heard of Pontius Pilate. In Luke 3, verse 1, 
Pontius Pilate being governor of Judea. Okay, so Pontius Pilate was the fifth Roman procurator of Judea, appointed to that office by Tiberius in 26 AD. Pontius Pilate happened to be in residence in Jerusalem during Passover when Jesus was arrested and put on trial, and it was he who pronounced the sentence of death. Found is the Pontius Pilate description here. It was discovered in 1961. Also on display in the British Museum are these bronze coins of Pontius Pilate. And what about the high priest Caiaphas? In Matthew 26 3, it states, then assembled together the chief priests and the scribes and the elders of the people unto the palace of the high priest who was called Caiaphas. And get this, in December of 1990, there was an exciting discovery that rocked the world of archaeology when in the peace forset section of Jerusalem, a first century ossuary or bone box was discovered. Inscribed on the ossuary were the words, Yehosef bar Caiapha, translated as Joseph, son of Caiaphas. Here's a photograph of the ossuary itself. Fact 25, King Herod. Ah, yes, let's talk about King Herod for a moment. In Matthew 2, 1, Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem. So Herod the first, or Herod the great, was a Roman client king of Judea from 74 B.C. to 4 B.C. Here's a picture drawn of Herod the Great. Also discovered were these bronze coins honoring Herod the Great. How about Herod Antipas? In Matthew 14.3, For Herod had laid hold on John and bound him and put him in prison for Herodias' sake his brother Philip's wife. Herod Antipas is remembered for his involvement in the imprisonment and death of John the Baptist. Here, once again, we find coins honoring Herod Antipas, who reigned from 6 AD to 39 AD. Let's now consider fact number 27, King Aretas IV. 2 Corinthians 11, verse 32. In Damascus, the governor under Aretas the king kept the city of the Damascenes with the garrison, desirous to apprehend me. King Aretas was a Nabathean king who reigned from 9 BC to 40 AD. Discovered were these bronze coins, this time representing King Aretas IV himself. Fact 28. Crucifixion, the Yehohanan ossuary, in Matthew 27, verse 38. Then were there two thieves crucified with him, one on the right hand and another on the left. In 1968, archaeologists excavated an ossuary in Jerusalem that contained the bones of a crucified man named Yehohanan. His ossuary can be found in the Israel Museum. The ossuary contained a heel with a nail driven through its side. The nail had olive wood on it, indicating that he was crucified on a cross made of olive wood or on an olive tree. This is a photograph of the actual heel bone pierced by an iron nail. And what about Claudius Caesar? He's noted in Acts 18.2, which states, because Claudius had commanded all Jews to depart from Rome, Okay, so he's in the Bible. We do know that Claudius Caesar was the fourth Roman emperor of the Julio-Claudian dynasty. This bust of Claudius was found and is on display at the Naples National Archaeological Museum. And here is yet another coin, this one honoring Claudius. And what about Nero Claudius Caesar? He's noted in 2 Timothy 4, verse 22, where it states, From Rome, when Paul was brought before Nero. Okay, 
We do know that Nero Claudius Caesar was the fifth and last Roman emperor of the Julio-Claudian dynasty. Nero's bust was found and can be seen on display in Capitolini, Rome. And as you can see, this coin provides a lovely profile of Nero Claudius Caesar himself, wouldn't you say? And what about the goddess Diana of the Ephesians? In Acts 19, verse 27, it states, So that not only this, our craft, is in danger to be set at naught, but also that the temple of the great goddess Diana should be despised, and her magnificence should be destroyed, whom all Asia and the world worshipeth. Acts 19, verse 35 goes on to also state, Ye men of Ephesus, what man is there that knoweth not how that the city of the Ephesians is a worshiper of the great goddess Diana? Notice the statue of Diana on display in the Louvre in France. Also notice the silver coin which depicts the statue of Diana of the Ephesians. All right, so here's another one for you. Antonius Felix. He's noted in Acts 23, verse 24. And provide them beasts that they may set Paul on and bring him safe unto Felix the governor. Also noted in Acts 24, verse 27. But after two years, Porcius Festus came into Felix's room, and Felix, will to show the Jews a pleasure, left Paul bound. Marcus Antonius Felix was the ancient Roman procurator of Judea, from 52 to 60 A.D. Here's a picture drawn of Antonius. And here you see these bronze puta, which were minted by Antonius Felix. And what about the Decapolis? That was a pretty awesome place for its time. In Mark 5, verse 20, it states, And he departed and began to publish in Decapolis how great things Jesus had done for him, and all men did marvel. The term Decapolis is derived from the Greek word meaning ten cities. The Decapolis was a ten cities Greco-Roman federation, or league, occupying all of Bashan and Gilead in northeastern Palestine. Here you see a map of the ten Decapolis cities, And here are the ruins of the Decapolis city of Cephopolis. And what about the Temple of Castor and Pollux? It's noted in Acts 28 and verse 11, where it states, And after three months we departed in a ship of Alexandria, which had wintered in the isle, whose sign was Castor and Pollux. The sign they're talking about is the Temple of Castor and Pollux, an ancient edifice in the Roman Forum in Rome. It was originally built in gratitude for victory at the Battle of Lake Regulus in 495 B.C. Parts of the Temple of Castor and Pollux still stand today, as seen here. Have you ever heard of the Gallio inscription? Get this, in Acts 18, verse 2, And when Gallio was a deputy of Achaia, the Jews made insurrection with one accord against Paul and brought him to the judgment seat. So the Jews took Paul to Gallio, who was, I guess, a judge or deputy. The Gallio inscription at Delphi is the name given to a collection of nine fragments of a letter written by the Roman Emperor Claudius in 52 CE. It was discovered in the early 20th century at the Temple of Apollo in Delphi, Greece, and this is what remains of it today. Fact 36, the Sergius Paulus inscription. In Acts 13, verse 7, which was the deputy of the country, Sergius Paulus, a prudent man, who called for Barnabas and Saul and desired to hear the word of God. In 1877, an inscription was found near Paphos, bearing Sergius Paulus's name and the title of proconsul. Photographed is the Sergius Paulus inscription itself. And what about the ancient city of Thessalonica? 
It's noted in Acts 17, verse 1. Now, when they had passed through Amphipolis and Apollonia, they came to Thessalonica, where a synagogue of the Jews was. Thessalonica was the capital of one of the four Roman districts of Macedonia, and was named after the wife of Cassander, who built the city. Here are the ruined remains of the marketplace in Thessalonica. And here we also see the ruins of the bathhouse. And what about the fishing village of Capernaum? In John 6, verse 59, it states, These things said he in the synagogue as he taught in Capernaum. Matthew 4.13 also states, In leaving Nazareth, he came and dwelt in Capernaum, which is upon the sea coast, in the borders of Zebulon and Nephilim. Capernaum was a large Galilean fishing village and busy trading center. This place is of special interest to Christians because of its frequent mention in the history of Jesus Christ. These are the remains of the synagogue in ancient Capernaum. Also photographed here are the ruins of Capernaum itself. And what about the city of Bethlehem? If Jesus does not exist, then I suppose Bethlehem does not either. The city of Bethlehem is mentioned a total of 51 times in the Bible. For example, in Matthew 2.1, it is stated, Now, when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem. Here is the city of Bethlehem today. So let's end this additional list of 20 facts with Jerusalem one last time. It's named a total of 141 times in the New Testament. And as you can see, once again, yes, the city of Jerusalem still stands today, proof that the Bible is historically accurate. So again, I say, the next time someone tries to tell you that the Bible is just a bunch of made-up stories, Throw them one or several of these simple 40 facts covered here today. The Bible is very real, folks, and we need to pay attention. You can always find more astonishing and enlightening videos like these at the Scriptures and Science channel on YouTube. To hear about Prophecy in Motion today, you can also visit the Watchman Review channel on YouTube. We thank you for watching and wish many blessings to you and yours.